Welcome to the Recognizing and Monitoring Dystocia Learn Now video. This video provides critical information regarding dystocia, known as an abnormal or difficult cabin, including timelines and cow signs, which can be used to timely identify if and when a cow might need assistance to deliver its calf. Dystocia is defined as a difficult cabin where assistance is required to deliver the calf. The most common causes of dystocia are mismatched fetal maternal size, which is the calf is too big for the cow or the cow's pelvis is too small for the calf and is more common in first calf heifers. An abnormal position of the calf, more common in mature cows, uterine inertia, which is when the uterus does not contract, and uterine torsion, also known as twisted uterus. As mentioned in the previous video, two calf presentations are considered normal in cattle, extended forward and extended backward presentations. Any calf presentation different than these two is considered abnormal. The most common calf mouth presentations are when the extremities of the calf are deviated such as the first picture, which shows a calf with its head deviated, or in the picture below, which shows a calf with its rear legs deviated. Sometimes, the position of the body of the calf can be abnormal, like in the last picture, which shows a calf upside down. In order to assist a dystocic birth in a timely manner, the maternity personnel must monitor the close-up pen at least every hour to identify cows starting labor. The beginning of labor is marked by the appearance of the water bag or feet of the calf outside the vulva. Once this process starts, it lasts on average 40 to 45 minutes and gradually progresses every 15 to 20 minutes, ending with the total expulsion of the calf. Therefore, once the feet of the calf are observed through the vulva, the cow should be monitored at least every 15 to 20 minutes to make sure progress continues. In order to keep track of labor progress and accurately communicate this critical information to the person working the following shift, the employees should record the cow ID, the time of the beginning of labor, along with any other detail of the cabin in their notebook or, if available, in a whiteboard in the maternity area. If there is no evident progress, after 15 to 20 minutes from the start of labor, but the cow is pushing and the calf appears to be in a normal position, allow more time. If after 30 to 40 minutes there is still no progress, maternity employees should check the dilation of the birth canal and the calf position. In order to prevent contamination of the uterus, workers should clean the vulva and surrounding areas and use clean sleeves before starting to assess dilation and calf position. Also, personnel should always introduce lubricant solution before performing any manipulation of the birth canal or calf. If the birth canal is dilated, the calf is in a normal position and the cow is still pushing, do not further disturb the cow and allow her more time. If after 70 minutes, from the start of labor, there is still no progress, restrain the cow and follow the farm's SOPs to properly assist the cow. Immediately assist the cow if the calf presents an abnormal position, purple coloration, and or swelling of the tongue and head. Also, a calf that experienced a stressful calving might present a yellow coloration resulting from the defecation of the first feces known as meconium, inside the uterus. In this case, immediate assistance is required as well. By properly monitoring the time in labor, maternity personnel can provide timely assistance to the dam and calf, and prevent common problems caused both by assisting the dam too soon, such as pulver laceration and uterine rupture, and too late, such as having a stillborn calf. Thank you for watching, and for more information regarding assisting dystocic calvins, calf and calostrum management practices, and record keeping in maternity operations, 
watch the next modules of the Maternity Management Practices Learn Now video series.